and welcome to this video where we'll give you some ideas about how you can manage and monitor your uh, SAP cloud integration system, how to look for errors, what's, what's important you consider when you're designing to make sure you minimize the risk of errors, uh, and give you some tools and ideas about how you can make some of this a little easier. So the first part is obviously you want to take a look at I have flows to see what is being processed and there's this good uh, monitoring overview and this has all different capabilities, a lot of capabilities to understand what's going on. So if you are looking for specific iFlows, you have the option here to specify in a given range, do I have a, a given uh, iFlows that I want to monitor, uh, get customer. So you can search for it here and you can then add a given iFlow to it and you can see the number of times this has been executed. In here there's now an option that allow you to extend and have more capabilities to search for. So there's the option here you can search for sender 2 in it. Um, there's also option over here, so we have some values here. So this document number, so you can search from by, by googling values like this. And this makes it easier to search for a specific dom document number that is outside of the, the normal scope. So the normal scope you have in it is you have application ID, and this is the number you have up here. And so you can use both application ID, message ID, and collation number up here and search for a given value and this will then return our document and I think it's an or so all of these will be selected. Um, the correlation ID is really useful if you have messages that uses the process direct to span multiple processes so that will give you some extra input on what's happening and which message correlate to each other. Um, in here, you also have the option to look at MPL attachments if you have added those to your process. It works for, for writing debug logs, but you should not have it on as default because it can take a lot of uh, disk space that you may not want to, to, to have or to use uh, for it. Um, so one new thing or some new features that I've added is they have option here to navigate to the artifact editor and this is really a useful feature if you want or edit a uh, given iFlow to see what what is happening in this place. So one thing I've added to this uh, this iFlow in, in here is if I want to get this send and receive ID I could set them in here I could set application ID and right now I'm just using a number range but obviously you could select it using XPath, using uh, other tools to, to extract the data and get it into your uh, monitor. Uh, so obviously I cannot change uh, message ID or correlation ID. I can, when I'm sending the message, then I may be, be able to, at least to, to set the correlation ID uh, in the HTTP header I'm sending the message with. Um, one other thing we need no, notice here, so we have in this iFlow we have the sys message and I think that's the recommended way to store messages. One of the challenges is that with the standard monitor you currently cannot see these persisted messages so you need to use an API. But stay tuned, I will also show you a better monitor that can give you these uh, persisted messages. I'll show those to you. When you're designing your iFlow, you need to make sure you're using the exception sub process if you know that this is going to fail for some specific reason or not. Um, then use the exception sub process, extract the error, being able to, to process it, make it easier for you to manage it at the end um, and handle it in a more graceful way. And obviously you may try with some alerting and some, uh, some exception handling and then that will grow as you become more aware of what your application is able to do, how it works and what you can deal with in those perspectives. So that was uh, 
the exceptions uh, and you can put all all kind of logic into this and there's a way you can put in some Google scripts to extract some of the different content so we did talk about all the the header ones the the only thing that is missing right now was how do you add this uh, extra custom header and that currently needs to be done with a Groovy script where you get the message or uh, message log and then you can add these custom header documents uh, with specific data um, so that's the way to 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 get that and so you can search for so this could be uh, yeah, customer or partner number invoice number sales order number all these extra attributes that you have in your document that does not really fit as application id um, and also when we talk about this the same thing is with sender and receiver id you can also use those as a way to say okay we have resend it to sap but with arrow then from the lock you may be able to see a little easier what's happening and what kind of errors we have um yes so that was uh, what we covered if we go back to our monitor perspective um under here you would have some logs there's design time artifact and i think some of these will yeah i think this is a new one that can give you access and, and delete these logs so you know some guy has locked it is, which is me um that you have edited and then someone at a later point in time want to edit this with this setting you can now delete the, the logs um, and allow you to edit them anyway the same thing with, with message log there can also be times for instance in, in the sfdp where you want to set a log so other file other tools or services would not process the same file um so that's also an option to have here um, the other thing obviously you want to check is are there any messages that have failed for the last two weeks so we got some problems here um, when calling this and this is obviously the, the important part how many errors you have how do you follow up on these errors um, and I don't know what what this is so this is we are trying to call the forgot tool remotely and it fails for some specific reason um but the main thing is that you at least set up some some alerting here that allow you to to manage uh, all the alerts that are coming in so you can see how many failures you have and obviously the, the same thing for, for the content it's also a good idea to to see why some of the iflows you have created is not able to work and out here it seems like we have some sftp problems which i think is because i destroyed the FTP server but you know, nevertheless um, this is also a good idea to keep track on do we have anything that deploys with errors uh, along the way um, there so in here in the access policy you can create uh, new new access policies To, to give access in here you can add um, using this functionality you can give access to specific users so they can see specific iflows and then you can add user roles uh, to this um, it's a little com more complicated but it gives you an, uh, an ability to to say for this iflow only people with this role can view them uh, if you have critical interfaces and stuff like that um, they would all still be in the same iflow or the same log so people can see them but not see the content of the so one thing is that if you have an iflow that fails for some specific reason you want to have a way to follow up with this we in figaf have created a tool that allow you to fetch all of these messages and then make it really easy for them uh, for you to to manage and process these messages so we've set up a rule that you can say okay for all the alerts that are happening it's using an odata filter you would get all the payload data here and you can then set up a specific rule 
what the problem is, how to solve this, and then send it either to a web page or an email. And then once you get the information there, you can see, ah, this is what happens. Uh, you can go back into the alerting tool and say, okay, this is now done. I'm good with it. And then you will build up a list of all the different rules that you have. Um, and with that, reduce the time needed to solve these incidents. Other thing we have that sometimes makes it easier to troubleshoot what's going on, how well much your CPI system is working, is this uh, monitor. And this gives you an idea about the CPU usage, the, the memory usage of, of the system. Um, sometimes it can be useful if you have flows that consume a lot of CPU that you can see, okay, we have spikes here. There's obviously a lot of challenges with this about how well does this work. Um, it's a cloud environment. You don't manage it. You don't know the number of resources that has been assigned. But it does give you some indicators that you can be using to, to handle these things. We also provide some latency that will give you how much, how a standard iFlow, how long time does it take to execute. So if you see that there's spikes in this, that it takes uh, way too long time for, for it to execute, you know there's something wrong on the system that you may need to investigate at a later point in time or now. And you can set up a filter that says, hey, the latency of this sample iFlow is above five, five seconds. We want to see is this something that is general or just for this specific case. Um, so that was some of the features we've built into the tool to make it easier to monitor. Uh, we also have a CPI monitor, and I think this is also one of the things that make it a little easier to, for you to manage your CPI. So one of the, the main thing is that you can monitor multiple iFlows in one tile. That means you can give access to specific business users saying, hey, you are allowed to monitor our finance processes or customer orders process. And then you can give them access and say, okay, you can watch, watch this customer orders with payloads. Uh, and then being able to see what's going on. And if you remember, uh, I did speak about the, you could also get the persistent messages from this. Um, and here we have the persistent messages. So they're shown the same way and you will, as a user, just get access to them. So you can see the data uh, and, and view and monitor it just like any other thing. So we tried to make it a little easier for you to, to look at the payload find the right messages, give you a better understanding of the flows uh, that involved in it, uh, in the monitor. Um, so it's easier to manage your SAP CPI. So that was all I wanted to share with you in this video, how you can manage and monitor your SAP CPI system a little easier. Hopefully you will see that the FIGAF tool can add some more capability to your monitoring. It also have a lot of other capability like testing, like change tracking and these kind of things that is really important when you're doing a CPI development to speed up the delivery process so you can see what is going on when you're delivering SAP integrations. Um, so uh, yeah, I hope it's, re it's been useful. If you like it, please uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and then uh, go try out the FIGAF tool and see how it can simplify your CPI monitoring. Thanks.